Good morning, Bethelese family and friends. On behalf of Pastor Herod, we want to welcome you to our worship service. We're so glad that you have tuned in with us today. If you are not a member of Bethel East, we would love to connect with you. Text the phrase BBCE Welcome to 80123 and click on the link so that we can connect with you. We hope that as you worship with us online, a connection happens that will be a blessing to you and help you on your journey. Happy birthday. We would like to give a shout out to all of those celebrating birthdays this upcoming week. Happy birthday and may the rest of your days be the best of your days. Sunday at 9 a.m., join us for Sunday School by dialing in to our conference line. On Sunday at 10 a.m., tune in for corporate worship on YouTube Live. And Sunday at 2 p.m., dial in for afternoon fellowship. And on Thursday at 7 p.m., join in our weekly prayer call. All other updates are sent via email or posted to our media platforms. So if you haven't done so, please like us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, or email office at BethelEast.org if your contact information is not up to date in our system. For the month of October, Pastor will bring a preaching series on fasting and Bible study series on the spiritual disciplines. Bible study will be back at 6 p.m. and more information will be provided. Please make plans to tune in and also engage in easy evangelism by sharing it with your network. For the next 21 days, we're committing to prayer and fasting as a church. Fasting should be a response to the prompting of the Holy Spirit and a desire to align yourself with God's will and submission and obedience. And this fast has been God-inspired and God-ordained. This is a time to go beyond our normal prayer and devotion life and unify in seeking God as a church. 21 days of prayer and fasting will begin on October 5th and will end on October 25th. Beginning Monday, October 5th, we will have a prayer call Monday through Friday from 7 a.m. to 7.15 a.m. Head Start challenges all of us to make this prayer call a daily priority. The number for the conference call is 563-999-2099. With code 127416. Pastor has provided a prayer and fasting guide for information about fasting, types of fast, results of prayer and fasting, and other resources and contacts for your information. Please see the fasting and prayer guide for passing from food and other things and the types of fast before participating in this particular fast. If you do not participate in this fast for health reasons or any other reasons, please still join us for prayer Monday through Friday. If you did not receive a copy of this prayer and fasting guide via email, please email office at BethelEast.org for your copy. Are you a member of Bethel East but not a member of the Bethel Baptist Church East Credit Union? We strongly encourage you to join our credit union today. As we look forward to staying connected during this time, there are also multiple ways in which you can give during this time. You can give electronically with Givelify, or you can mail in your contribution to our church office. Also, you can call the church office and request that your contribution be picked up. Lastly, you can drop off on Sundays between 8.30 a.m. and 9.30 a.m. and again from 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. The Michigan Department of Health and Human Services has partnered with Trusted Community Partners to launch neighborhood COVID-19 testing sites. And now, Bethel Baptist Church East is one of those sites. These locations were chosen to help address racial and ethnic disparities that had existed prior to the pandemic and were amplified by the virus. This is a focus of the Racial Disparities Task Force. Governor Whitner adds, after looking closely at the data and working with community partners, 
We believe these sites will provide the greatest access to testing for Michiganders across the state. We appreciate the willingness of these community partners to open their doors for this very important effort. This testing is available to anyone at no cost. No prescription is needed, no ID nor insurance is required, but please bring your insurance card if you are using insurance. It is available to those who are asymptomatic, and while walk-ins are accepted, advanced registration is preferred. Our site is open for testing on Monday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., Wednesday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m., and on Friday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. To register for a test in advance, you can call the COVID hotline at 1-888-535-6136 and press 1. Also, online registration is available at michigan.gov slash coronavirus test. For this information that was just provided, you can go online at michigan.gov slash mdhhs or call our church office. Today is first Sunday, let us gather. Immediately following this worship service, we will take part in the Lord's Supper together. Please gather some type of bread that is representative of the Lord's body, as well as some type of juice that is also representative of the Lord's blood so that we can take part in this together. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Let us keep everyone on the prayer list lifted in prayer, and let us continue to pray for one another. These are your church announcements. Now let's worship God together in spirit and in truth. Hi, good morning. I will be reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7. Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no recordings of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hope, always perseveres. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Amen. I don't feel no ways tired. I come too far from where I started from. Nobody told me the road would be easy, but I don't believe. No, I know he didn't bring me this far to lead me. There are people today that are afraid of the virus, they're afraid of unemployment, they're afraid of the economy, they're just afraid. But I have to go back to what my grandmother told me and saying that there is no problem man has that God can't solve. There's no road if we travel holding God's hand. We can't walk together to the end of the road. And when at times we can't walk, the Lord will carry us. We shouldn't worry about the coronavirus as long as we believe in Jesus Christ and God is our Savior. Dear Lord, we ask that you continue to bless us in a special way. Be there for us. And not only for us individually, but let us have strength for those who may not have faith. Let us be able to hold out our hands and pick them up and say, God didn't leave me and he won't leave you. We ask the Lord that tomorrow be a brighter day, dear Lord, because we love you and we want to praise your name. We ask that we continue to serve you and be with you in a special way. And in Jesus' name, let us all say amen, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. Come on, begin to tell God thank you. Come on, give God the fruit of your lips and start telling God thank you. Come on, thank him for waking you up this morning. Thank him for all the many blessings he has bestowed upon you. Thank him for life, health, and strength. 
let me remind you, you made it another week, another day. And for that reason, you ought to tell God, thank you and give him all the praise, all the honor and all the glory. God is truly worthy. He's truly worthy to be praised. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. You and I were created to worship him. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. Uh, well, good morning, Beth Elise. Amen. Uh, good morning, Beth Elise. This is the day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I do want to say to all of our guests, uh, thank you so much. I do want to welcome you in Jesus' name, and thank you so much uh, for taking out your time to worship with us on today. Um, and if you have not already done so, please do me a favor and uh, text BBCE welcome to 80123. Text BBCE welcome to 80123 so that we can uh, welcome you in a more intimate way. Uh, but nevertheless, we do want to thank you for worshiping with us on today. Amen. And to everybody else who's watching, amen, all the family and friends, I do want to greet you in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus the Christ. I also want to encourage you, everyone who's watching this, I want to, I want to encourage you uh, to engage in online evangelism. Uh, engage in online evangelism by sharing this worship experience with someone in your network. Someone uh, needs to hear a word from the Lord. And I encourage you uh, to engage in this easy evangelism by hitting that share button, sharing this link with someone, sharing this worship experience with someone. And as you uh, share that worship experience with, with them, uh, we're going to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to take care of the rest. So I do want to encourage you to do that. I uh, also want to remind you that um, in the month of October, we made it uh, to the fourth quarter of this year. And we're going to start off this month uh, by preaching a series on fasting. Amen. So for the entire month of October, we're going to be preaching and teaching on uh, fasting and um, Bible study will be back soon. And we'll uh, be teaching on the um, spiritual disciplines. Amen. So I do encourage you to look out for that. And also when that comes, also share that with others. And as you share that with others and do your part, trust and know that God is going to do his part in Jesus name. Uh, well, listen, it's giving time. It's time uh, that we worship the Lord in giving. Uh, and as uh, you know, by now, you can give at any time. You can give at any time. But we do want to set aside this specific time just to expound on that component of worship. Uh, I do want to remind you, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 says, The Lord loves a cheerful giver. And we thank God for all the gifts that have already come. But we definitely want to just pause and pray the Lord's blessings upon all these tithes and offerings. Eternal God, our fathers, once again, we come to you to say thank you. Father, we are able to give because you have first given unto us. And we are forever grateful for giving uh, us your greatest gift in the Lord Jesus the Christ. Thank you so much for giving us your only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. For it is in him that we live, move, and have our very being. So thank you so much for that. And not only that, Lord, but as we prepare to return unto you a portion of what you have first given unto us, I pray, oh God, that you would bless these offerings and may they be used for your glory and your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen. You should see on your screens the multiple ways in which you can give during this time. We have made uh, four ways available in this space that we are in. You can give, number one, via electronically. You can give electronically via Givelify. Uh, you can give, you can drop off your contributions. You can drop off your contributions on Sunday uh, between the hour of 8.30 and 9.30 and also 11.30 and 12.30. Uh, you can mail in your contribution. You can mail in your contribution to our church address, and that address is listed on your screen. And finally, finally, you can request that your contribution be picked up. So I do want to encourage you to take advantage 
of uh, one of uh, four of those methods to give uh, your tithes and offerings during this time. And not only that, um, but in addition to giving God your tithe, I want to encourage you to also give God an offering. Amen. We have uh, made so many channels available uh, through which we're doing God's work, such as community outreach, benevolent, and so many others. So I pray that as the Holy uh, Spirit moves in you and as your um, generosity is sparked, you will also uh, use one of those channels to also give over and above your tithes. I know people are still giving towards the 100th anniversary and people are giving towards community outreach and so much other. God is doing so many great things and God is going to continually uh, take our collective faith and finance to fund and do his work on earth, on Holcomb, on the east side, through us as it is in heaven. But nevertheless, giving is worship um, and giving is between you and God. Uh, but as pastor, I do want to thank you for channeling your worship through this local body and be assured that all gifts will be used for God's work and God's glory in Jesus name. Man, hey, listen, now it's praying time. Uh, we're not only a giving church, but we're also a praying church. Amen. So as we prepare um, to go to God in prayer together, I do want to encourage you to type out those prayer requests, uh, call out those names and, and call out those requests and prepare your heart and mind to submit all of your burdens, all of the things that have been weighing on your mind and heart. Prepare right now that as we go in this space of prayer to release it to him right now in the name of Jesus. Take it to the Lord and leave it there. Um, so as we prepare to go to God in prayer together in this corporate space, in this online space, I do encourage you to prepare your hearts and minds to pray. And also be mindful. Be mindful of our prayer list for this week. Uh, we are in continued prayers for uh, Brother Joe Hill. Uh, we're in continued prayers for Sister Janet McAlpin, uh, Sister Wanda Harrison. And also we're praying for Sister Constance Burst, Deaconess Constance Burst, um, and Sister Billie Jean Johnson, and also Sister Ivory Thompson Bailey. Amen. We want to keep all of them in our prayers. And also Sister Dana Anderson. Amen. We want to keep all of them in our prayers. And reality is, um, I have prayer requests, you have prayer requests, and we all need prayer. So let's go to God in prayer together. Eternal God, our fathers, once again, that we come to you to say thank you. Lord, before we ask you for anything, we just want to thank you for everything. Father, we thank you for all the many blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We thank you for waking us up this morning, starting us on our way. And we thank you for all that you have provided, Lord. We thank you for your provision, Lord. For you have supplied all of our needs according to your riches and glory. Father, we recognize that it is in you that we live, move, and have our very being. And Lord, we are totally trusting, relying, and depending on you. Lord, we need you. And we thank you for the privilege to be able to call you Father. We thank you for that intimate relationship with you in which we can bring all of our problems, all of our burdens, Lord, and you will take care of our problems. You will take care of our burdens and you will do that which is perfect according to your will. So thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for your sacrifice, oh God. We thank you uh, for dying, oh God, dying on the cross for our sins, your death, your burial, and your resurrection, Father. We thank you for salvation. We thank you for life, and not only life, but life more abundantly. Father, we thank you for keeping us, oh God. We thank you for your keeping power, for you have kept us in the midst of all of the troubles that are going on in our world. You've kept us in the midst of this pandemic, oh God, and in the midst of all the turmoil, danger, negativity, and unrest, you have given us a peace that surpasses all understanding. So Father, we thank you for that. And Lord, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. For Lord, we need you, Lord. We need you in times like these. If there ever was a time that we needed you, that time is right now. And I'm praying, oh God, that you will see about us right now in the name of Jesus. 
we lift up every name that is on our prayer list right now in the name of Jesus. You know every need of theirs individually, and I'm praying that you will meet their need. I'm praying that you will strengthen their faith, and I'm praying that you will give them the strength to continue their race in the name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, you see every name that has been typed. You heard every name that has been called. You heard every request that has been lifted. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you will heal, that you will deliver, that you will save, that you will solve, that you will sustain, that you will deliver right now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying for that person, oh God, who is on the verge of giving up. I pray, oh God, that you will strengthen them in you right now in the name of Jesus. I pray, oh God, that your Holy Spirit will rest, rule, and abide with them now, hence, and forevermore. I'm praying, oh God, that you will remind them of your promises, oh God. Remind them of your word. Renew them in your word. Renew them in your will. Restore to them the joy of their salvation, that they may continue to live their life according to your will. Lord, somebody who hears this prayer has a heavy heart. And I'm praying, oh God, that you will heal them right now in the name of Jesus. Somebody who hears this prayer is hurting, oh God, confused, oh God, going through something that nobody knows about but you and them. And I'm praying, oh God, that you will solve their problem. I'm praying that you'll give them peace, oh God. Give them direction, oh God. And give us all wisdom, knowledge, understanding, and discernment, oh God, that we may live a life that is pleasing unto you. I pray a blessing upon everyone who hears this prayer, oh God. I pray that you will continue to bless them and keep them, oh God. Bless everyone they're connected to right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I'm praying for this city, oh God. You see all the problems that are going on, and one highlight is the violence, oh God. And I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus for peace. Oh God, I'm not only praying for peace, oh God, but I'm praying right now that you will continue to equip and dispatch your church in such a way that we will not wrestle against flesh and blood, but we will wrestle against principalities and powers, oh God. And I'm praying, oh God, that we will tear down such strongholds, tear down all of Satan's kingdoms and dominions and areas of influence right now in the name of Jesus. Pray that you'll empower and equip your people in such a way, oh God, that they will do your work on earth as it is in heaven. God, I'm praying for this country, oh God. God, it seems that this country is more divided than ever. And Lord, we know that such division is not in your will and is not of your work. But I'm praying right now, oh God, that you will continue, continue to bless us and keep us, oh God. Bring about reconciliation. Bring about your will on earth as it is in heaven. Thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. This is our prayer in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I mean, at this time, we're going to um, go back into worship and worshiping the Lord in song. And following that, we'll get right into, right into the word of God. Amen. Blessed be. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I've had some good days I've had some hills to climb I've had some weary days And some sleepless nights see the road I've 
I've asked the question, Lord. Why, oh, why, why, why so much pain? But oh, He's been so good to me. More than these eyes can see. So I. Just say thank you, Lord. Now, Lord, I won't complain. Sometimes the clouds hang low. I, I can hardly see the road. I've asked a question, Lord. Why, oh, why, why, so much pain? But oh, it's been so good to me. It's been so good to me. More than this old world or you could ever be. Better than you, or this old world could ever be. It's been so good to me. Oh, it drives, it drives, it drives all my tears away. Turn my midnight sin today. So I. I've been misunderstood, but thank you, Lord, that so body might be wrecked with pain, but thank you, Lord, and I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't complain, no, 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 because he, he drives all my tears away. Turn Today, so I say thank you, Lord. Oh, I know, I know. I want to say thank you, Lord. Sometimes the bills are due, don't know where the money is coming from. But I thank you, Lord. today so I say thank you Lord I won't, I won't I won't, I won't I won't complain no, no, no no, no no Father, I just want to simply say thank you. I just simply want to say thank you. Now, Lord, it's preaching time. And as the one who will deliver your word, Lord, I want to publicly confess before you and all that may hear that I have studied your word. I have labored in your word. I 
meditated over your word. But Lord, I can go no further. So I pray that you will decrease me right now in the name of Jesus and increase your Holy Spirit within me. I'm praying that you will turn down my flesh and turn up your spirit. I'm praying that just like the prophet Jeremiah, you will put your words in my mouth that I may declare what thus saith the Lord. Now, Lord, open up our eyes so that we will see. Open up our ears so that we will hear. Praying to open up our minds so that we will receive. And open up our hearts so that we will change. Father, it is my prayer that through this word, souls will be saved and disciples will be made. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Amen. Join me in the book of Mark, chapter number nine. Mark, chapter number nine. And we're going to read verses 28 and 29. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. Mark, chapter nine verse 28 and 29 you should see this scripture on your screens as well the bible reads like this and when jesus had come into the house his disciples asked him privately why could we not cast it out so jesus said to them this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Amen. The word of God is blessed. I pray that he bless the readers, hearers, and doers of his word. And when Jesus had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. Uh, just for a little while, I would like to use for a subject, no demon formed against you shall prosper. No demon formed against you shall prosper. Uh, have you ever dealt with something that could not be solved by normal means? Or maybe you are dealing with something right now that just can't be solved by normal means. And one of the ways you can tell that it can't be solved by normal means is because you tried. You tried to deal with that issue, but it's still there. You tried to stop that behavior, or you're trying to shake off that behavior right now, but you can't. You tried to shake off that bad attitude, or Maybe you're trying to deal with that bad attitude right now, but you can't. You sought counseling about this particular matter, or maybe you are in counseling right now, but the issue just won't go away. Some of you have picked up a bottle at a point of time, and you thought you could drink it away, but the problem is still there. Some of you rolled up the problem in a blunt. And you tried to smoke it away, yet the problem is still there. Some of you booked a flight and you got on a flight and went on a vacation, yet when you came back home and now settled back into your reality, the problem is still there. You praise the Lord every Sunday or maybe even every day. You praise the Lord every day, but you can't quite praise this issue away. You went to the pastor or you went to somebody who you trust, somebody who you know is in Christ about this issue, and you had a good talk with them, yet the problem still is there. Some of you have looked into horoscopes and readings and, and other alternatives in hopes to solve that issue, but it's still there. You tune into church on Sunday, but after you tune off the stream, the problem is still there. 
You sing your praise songs throughout the day and you turn it on 99.9 while you're in the car and you have a good time in praise and worship, but the problem is still there. And after trying everything to get this issue to go away, you are now confused and wondering why won't this issue go away? Why can't you solve it with normal means? This seems to be the case here with the disciples here in Mark chapter 9. They were brought an issue. A father's son had been demon-possessed since his childhood. It had an influence on this young man's actions all of his life. And these abnormal outward expressions and actions of the young man were due to an inward demonic influence. And the father brought the son to these disciples, these preachers, these followers of Christ, and they tried to cast out the evil spirit, but they couldn't. And later that day, they get home and they're chilling with Jesus at the crib. And when they got Jesus by themselves, they asked Jesus, why were we not able to cast out this evil spirit? Ladies and gentlemen, this seems to imply or their question to Jesus asking him why couldn't they cast it out implies that they thought they had what it took to solve this issue. And a closer look at their life, friends, seems to imply that at one point in their life, they did have what it takes to deal and cast out this evil spirit. Because according to Mark chapter 6, verse 7, Jesus sent these same disciples out and gave them authority to cast out evil spirits. Furthermore, in Mark chapter 6, verse number 13, the Bible says that they cast out many demons and healed many sick people. So historically, they were given the authority to cast out evil spirits, and they even had some success with casting out evil spirits. Spirits, but here in Mark chapter 9, with this particular evil spirit, they tried to cast it out, but they failed. And I know somebody out there listening, you have had some success dealing with some of your issues, but then there are other issues that you can't get a hold of, but instead it has a hold of you. Somebody out there listening, you have had success with dealing with some problems, but there is this particular problem that you just can't solve or cast out. And now, just like the disciples, the question is, why can't we cast it out? out. Thankfully, friends, Jesus has an answer for us, and his answer is right there in verse number 29. Jesus says to them this, he says it's like this, uh, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting. The fact that Jesus says this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting seems to imply that they tried to solve this issue without prayer and fasting. Here, uh, hear this, friends. Prayer is our sign of dependency on God. Fasting is our sign of humbleness before God. And the reality is they tried to cast out this evil spirit apart from Jesus. Uh, they must have started started to think that the power was of them and not of him. And as a result, they attempted to deal with this demon, but didn't have the faith to cast this demon out. Get this, the faith needed to deal with this demon would have been cultivated through spiritual discipline and devotion. But apparently, they had become careless in their spiritual walk and neglected spiritual discipline and devotion yet they thought they would still be able to cast out the evil spirit. However, that is not how it works. See, they were not fasted up and prayed up to deal with this issue, and this transitioned us right into our first point. 
And it teaches us a valuable lesson. Here it is. When dealing with issues that are beyond the norm, you have to go beyond your norm spiritually. I'm going to say it again for you. When dealing with issues that are beyond the norm, you have to go beyond your norm spiritually. Notice how Jesus says in the text, this kind cannot be driven out by anything but prayer and fasting. Uh, might I submit to you that the severity of some issues are beyond your norm. They are beyond the norm. And since you can't, and, and the reality is they, since they are beyond the norm, you can't handle those problems as if they are normal. But in order to handle the this kind that Jesus is talking about, you have to go beyond the norm and commit yourself to God that is beyond your normal prayer and devotional life. You have to build yourself up spiritually through prayer and fasting so that you can get back control of your life your relationship your mind and your destiny when you are dealing with something that is beyond the norm you have to go beyond the norm in your prayer and devotional life seeking God on another level so that you can handle and deal with what comes your way let, let me see if I can get you this way here it is uh, um, if you've ever ever um watch the high jumpers in the olympics if you ever watch the high jumpers in the olympics you will realize that there are two kinds of high jumpers uh, the, the the regular high jumpers jump about seven to eight feet and they run and they throw their backs over the bar but there's another kind of high jumper and the other kind of high jumper they jump about 18 feet they they will back up and they will go down and, and look down that runway and they will have this pole in their hand and they will start running down the track and they will stick the pole in a hole in the ground they will put all of their weights on that pole and they will use that pole to lift them to a level that they could not be lifted to on their own and friends some of us have issues that are higher than our capacity to handle in our own ability. We need some type of pole vault to help us to reach that level of difficulty. We need something that we can lean on so that we can go higher and so that we can lift ourselves and friends get this the pole vault in your life that will lift you up high so that you can clear that bar is fasting and prayer and when you fast and pray it will lift you up so high so that you can cast out those evil spirits it will lift you up high so that you can deal with and overcome that difficulty it will lift you up high so that you can take control and handle what comes your way so that person that's listening right now that has a heavy assignment on their life and is weighing on you heavy, you need to engage in fasting and prayer. To the person who is dealing with more in this season than ever before, uh, you're dealing with more um, on, on, on your job than ever before, the assignment that is on your life, the calling that's on your life, you're about to walk into purpose like never before. You need to engage and participate in prayer and fasting regularly. To that other person who keeps on leveling up, you do know that there is a devil for every level which means that you have to engage in fasting and prayer so that you can deal with what's coming your way you cannot stay in your normal routine when you are dealing with something that is out of the norm but you have to go beyond the norm spiritually as well so that you can deal with what's coming your way and if you don't do so you do not do so satan will seek to take an advantage in your life so number one number one when dealing with issues that are beyond the norm you have to go beyond your norm spiritually when dealing with issues that are beyond the norm you have to go beyond your norm spiritually and secondly this uh two points for today uh secondly fasting and prayer is your reminder that the power to deal with life is not in yourself, but it is in Christ alone. Fasting and prayer, it is your reminder that the power to deal with life is not in yourself, 
but it is in Christ alone. See, uh, in this text, when Jesus gave them the power to cast out evil spirits, uh, uh, he gave them this power to cast out evil spirits, but they uh, thought that the power was of them and not him. But the reality is that the power was of him and not them. And since the power is of him and not us, that is why in order for us to be successful in our assignment, we have to stay connected to the power source. And the problem in this text is, is that they have started to begin that the power was of them and not him and they had become disconnected from the power source prayer and fasting is the our disciplines that will help you to stay connected to the power source and that's why we should make prayer and fasting a regular practice in our lives because it appears from this text that the reason why they failed to cast out the evil spirit is because they were trying to live off the last chapter's power get this um they had an issue in mark chapter 9 but they were trying to live off the power that they were given in mark chapter 6 and see for some of you here uh some of you who hear my voice you used to pray and you stopped praying yet you still want the same results you used to fast but you stopped fasting yet you still want the same results you used to be committed um but you stopped being as committed as you are yet you want the same results but the reality is this and i need need you to get this commitment to God is not a one-time thing but it's an ongoing thing and your closeness to God is only good for the time that you are close to him which is why prayer and fasting should be and must be a regular discipline so that you will keep yourself in position to be dependent on God and when we don't pray and fast, it is as if we are saying that the power is of us rather than of him. When we don't pray and fast, we are depending on ourselves rather than depending on him. When we don't pray and fast, we are indirectly and directly saying that we can do it on our own. And the truth of the matter is this. Some things cannot be handled unless you pray and fast. So now... Um, since the importance of prayer and fasting has been stressed, the question now is, what is it about prayer and fasting that helps us to deal with issues that are beyond the norm? What is it about prayer and fasting that helps us to deal with issues that are beyond the norm? Good question. Get this. Prayer is God's gift to us to fellowship with him and express our dependency on him. Fasting is humbling yourself before God and depriving your flesh from something it desires to build yourself up spiritually. See, when you fast and deny your flesh of a meal, of television, of social media, of sweets, of, of something that it desires, when you deny your flesh of that, you weaken the flesh. And when the flesh becomes weak, it gives the opportunity to feed the soul and strengthen your spirit. And as you get stronger in the spirit, you will have the faith needed to cast out evil spirits and deal with issues that are beyond the norm. You will have greater power, greater grace because you have increased your time with God, which gives you everything that you need to handle what you are currently facing right now. And I'm just about done now, but let me just address this and I'll be right out your way. Um, some of your English versions omit the phrase and fasting in verse 29. It just says that um, this kind can be driven out by nothing but prayer. So some of the English versions omit and fasting. And the reason is this. The reason is because while um, some of the early Greek manuscripts do have and fasting, which in the Greek is um, um, kinesteia, other early Greek manuscripts do not have and fasting here. So since some, some Greek manuscripts have and fasting included, other 
um, Greek manuscripts does not have and fasting included, which is how, um, as a result, uh, versions like the English Standard Version, New International Version, New Living Translation, and the New Revised Standard Version does not have and fasting, but um, the King James Version and the New King James Version does include and fastings. And, and scholars debate on whether it should be included or not. But get this, ladies and gentlemen, uh, um, in spite of in spite of the debate that has been going on and probably will continue, the application for us does not change. Our power to deal with issues are derivative, which means that it is based on another another source. And given that the that our power is derivative, prayer and God centered fasting for us keeps us fueled by the source. And I can hear the season saying, saying no prayer, no power, little prayer, little power, much prayer, much power. And I'm done now. Uh, but to all the seasoned saints, who knows that saying, little prayer, little power, no prayer, no power, much prayer, no much, much prayer, much power. Let me tell you what some of us young people say. We use a phrase. You, you will hear a young person saying this phrase. You will hear a young person saying, tap in. <laughs> you might hear a young person saying, tap in. And when you hear a young person say to another person, tap in, all that means is that we got to get connected with each other. <laughs> and I got to get out of here, friends, but prayer and fasting is how you tap in to God's power. <laughs> fasting and prayer is how you tap in to more strength. Fasting and prayer is how you tap in to more faith. It's, it's how you tap in to the one who has all power. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's how you tap in to the one who died on Calvary. It's how you tap in to the one who defeated death. It's, it's how you tap in to the one who resurrected from the dead. Uh, uh, fasting and prayer is how you tap in with Jesus. I got to get out of here now, friends, but let me close by telling you to tap in. Uh, tap in with Jesus Christ. Uh, tap in with God Almighty. Uh, tap in with the Savior. Uh, tap in with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, in this season that we're in right now, we need power power to cast out demons, power to break bad habits, power to end negative cycles, power to tear down strongholds. In this season of our life, we need power. Somebody ought to shout in their home power because we need power, power in our churches, power in our work, power in our purposes. We need power. Power, power, power in our relationships, power in our businesses, power in all that we do, power in our city. We need power. Somebody ought to shout power. And can I tell you how you get power to cast out demons? Let me tell you how you get power to get the devil out your marriage. Let me tell you how you get power to get the devil out of your relationship. Let me tell you how to get power to get the devil out of your house. It comes by prayer and fasting. All, all you need to do is return to the Lord in prayer and fasting is there anybody out there who's made up in their mind that i'm gonna fight in the spirit i'm gonna fast and pray i'm gonna pray and fast because i need the lord to bring about change i need the lord to make a difference in my life in my situation in all that i'm going through somebody out there ought to declare that I'm fasting for my marriage I'm fasting for my life I'm fasting for my destiny
destiny. I'm fasting for my future. I'm praying for my kids. I'm praying for this church. I'm praying for my marriage. I'm praying over my situation. I'm praying over this city. I'm praying over this country because I believe that fasting and praying will solve all of our problems. You ought to declare where you are that no demon formed against you shall prosper. No demon formed against your marriage shall prosper. No demon formed against this church shall prosper. No demon that formed against my house shall prosper. No demon that formed against my bloodline shall prosper, but generational curses, negativity shall be broken in Jesus' name. All you got to do is turn to the Lord and he will solve your problem. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout hallelujah. No demon formed against me shall prosper. No demon formed against my life shall prosper but he can't have our kids he can't have our marriages he can't have this church he can't have this city but all demons shall be cast out in Jesus name and you ought to shout glory shout hallelujah shout yeah shout yeah No demon formed against you shall prosper. Come on, say that right in your home. No demon formed against you shall prosper. This is not the time to lie down, but this is the time to fight. And not only de declare, but also go to war in such a way that no demon formed against you shall prosper. Friends, when you are dealing with with issues that are beyond the norm you have to go beyond your norm spiritually and the reality is this we cannot go about business as usual the reason why because the stakes are too high satan has turned up the knob but i wish somebody would declare with me that we're ready because we're ready to fight in the spirit in such a way that we will not be controlled by evil spirits. We have all the tools needed. Thanks be unto God who have given us the tools needed to fight this battle, to fight this battle that we are in. And when we, not if we, but when we, when we fast and when we pray, we get access to a power that will help us to overcome any evil spirits and overcome with any, uh, all problems and all issues that may come our way. Wherever you are, lift your hands and give God praise and give God glory for he's truly worthy, he's truly worthy to be praised. No demon formed against you, it shall not prosper. Hey, listen, if there's somebody out there who has not accepted Christ, if you've not connected Christ or, or made Jesus the Lord of your life, we want to help you to take those next steps. Or maybe you have already accepted Christ, uh, but you are not connected to his church. We also want to help you to do so. And if I'm talking to you, this is what I need you to do. I need you to text um, BBCE Connect. Text BBCE Connect to 80123. And we're going to help you in this online space and beyond to either connect with Christ or his church or to connect both with Christ and his church or just to connect with ch his church if you're already connected with Christ. I do want to encourage you also to go into the comment section of this video. In the comment section of this video, you'll see information on how it is, on how it is you can connect with Christ. I do want to remind you, Romans 10 and 9, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus 
and believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, then thou shalt be saved. And as a church family, we stand with our virtual arms wide open, praying that if you're led by the Holy Spirit, you will join our family together as we seek to do God's work on earth as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. Amen. So uh, give God praise. Give God praise and give God glory for he's truly worthy. He's truly worthy to be praised. Hey, listen, I need you to know this before we get out of here or before we, rather we transition to Lord's Supper. I need you to know this. I have um, provided, as you should know already, I've provided a 21-day uh, prayer and fasting guide for you. So if you have not yet received this guide via email, uh, please email office at BethelEast.org probably did not receive it because we do not have uh, such contact information so this will also be a good time for you to update your email with the office but we uh, have made it available uh, for all of you who will be fasting with us we're going to begin um, a fast on tomorrow and every day Monday through Friday uh, we're going to be praying together uh, from 7 a.m. to 7 15 a.m. Um, and this fasting guide, uh, which has multiple options and more information, uh, will surely be a blessing to you as you uh, walk this journey, as we walk this journey together to seek God like never, like never before. Uh, next, today is first Sunday. Um, and given this first Sunday, we're going to observe the Lord's Supper together in this online space. Uh, so if you have not already done so, uh, go gather gather all your family get to a good spot together uh, go get something some type of bread or cracker that is representative of the lord's body and some type of juice grape juice some type of juice that is representative of the lord's blood and we are going to take uh, communion together in this online space and more importantly prepare your heart and mind um, i pray that you have um, already forgiven others just as christ has um, forgiven you and uh, also a good time to repent and pray the lord pray that the lord will forgive you um, during this time as we prepare um, to take communion together um, if you will not be sticking around for communion if you will not be sticking around uh, for the for uh, as we observe the lord's supper in this online space uh, i do want to say may god bless you and may God keep you and continue to stay tuned. Keep your ear, eyes, and attention out uh, for all that is to come. Because God is going to do great things, not only um, in these next 21 days, but God is going to do great things in these 21 days and beyond. So I need you to believe God with me, trust God with me, and let's walk together, journey together as we seek God together. And let God lead us from where we are to where he will have us to be. Amen. So to those who are not sticking around, may God bless you and may God keep you. Uh, to those who are sticking around, we're going to go right into Lord's Supper. So prepare your hearts, your minds, and uh, gather those elements in your family, families at this time as we prepare, as we prepare to observe the Lord's Supper together. Amen and amen. <laughs> What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Oh, nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow, no other found I know, it's nothing but the blood of Jesus There is power power wonder working power mm, in the blood of the Lamb Oh, there is power power Oh, wonder working 
wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood, in the blood of the Lamb. Prayerfully, um, you and your families are gathered together. Um, you have your grape juice or some form of juice that is representative of the Lord's um, blood and also some form of crackers or a related item that is representative of the Lord's body. Uh, once again, good teaching moment that it's really not about we, what we use, um, but it's about what we represent. Um, hopefully and prayerfully, um, you have prepared your minds and your hearts with your family collectively together um, to observe and to take the Lord's Supper. Um, this is a good time to just um, visualize and take our minds back um, to that day or that evening, that night when Jesus um, had a Passover meal uh, with his disciples. Um, it was on the night in which he was betrayed by his very own um, disciple, um, Judas, um, he was betrayed by his very, the, the man, one of the men who walked with him and talked with him, heard all of his teachings, and followed him everywhere he went. He was betrayed by him and ultimately um, that led to his death, that led to his crucifixion. Um, but thanks be unto God, as we know, um, there was no crucifixion without a resurrection. Um, Jesus, um, on that day, it was during Passover, um, he, he told his disciples to go ahead and find them a room for them to have a have, have the Passover meal together and they go into this upper room they sit down and they have conversations they're having a meal and all of a sudden Jesus took this bread and he said take and eat this bread for this is my body then he took that cup and he said take and drink for this is my blood which has been shed for you and shed for the remission of many sins and what a blessing it is and what a powerful moment that was that he shared with his disciples um, but guess what? He said something so interesting and so powerful. He said, do this in remembrance of me. Um, Jesus wanted us to remember his sacrifice. He wanted us to remember and, and to never forget how he shed his blood and how he sacrificed his body for us. And we know what Isaiah said. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our um, peace was upon him. But thanks again to God that by his stripes, we are healed. Now I want to um, read a passage out of 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, um, verses 23 through 29. I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version. The Bible says it like this. Uh, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you. And this is Paul talking. Um, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in, in, in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. 
But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drink in an unworthy manner eats and drink judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Amen. We're about to um, take the Lord's Supper together, but let me whisper a word of prayer and um, ask the Lord's um, forgiveness of our sins and also um, blessing of all of our elements. Eternal God, our fathers, once again, we come to you to say thank you. Father, we thank you for your sacrifice. We thank you for sending your son, Jesus, and his ultimate sacrifice for the sins of the world. We thank you that if we come to you in faith, Lord, you will uh, not only save us, Lord, but you will give us everything that we need. Lord, we thank you that it is not our work that saves us, but it is the work, the finished work of Jesus, the Christ that saved us. He has already shed his blood and, and already sacrificed his body on our behalf um, for the penalty of sin. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you because truth be told, it should have been us, Lord, because we make mistakes. We sin. We do things that we should not do. We go places we should not go. And we say some things that we should not say, Lord. But thank you um, for your work on the cross that saves us, that covers us, and that um, frees us um, from that penalty of sin. Now, Lord, as we move forward in this Lord's Supper, I'm praying right now that everybody who hears, hears my voice uh, will take time to examine themselves, Lord. I'm praying that they will look within and examine themselves. And if there's anything that is not like you, I pray that they will release it right now, will let go of it, will forsake it, will repent and turn from it right now in the name of Jesus. I'm praying that if anybody who hears my voice has unforgiveness in their heart, I'm praying right now, Lord, that you will bring them to a spirit of forgiveness, knowing, oh God, that you first have forgiven us. And since you have forgiven us for all the bad things and wrong things we have done, we too have been called to forgive one another when we have been wrong. And I'm praying, oh God, that they will go to that person, oh God, and, and, and seek reconciliation. But ultimately, Lord, I'm praying that they will um, go into a spirit of forgiveness and will forgive that person, oh God. And they will, all, if, if someone has not forgiven themselves, oh God, for something that may have happened, living with guilt, oh God, I pray that you will allow them to forgive themselves, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And now, Lord, we pray that you will forgive us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, we confess our sins. First John 1 and 9 reminds us that if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us. So please, Lord, forgive us for our sins right now in Jesus' name, Lord. And I pray that you will bless our elements, oh God. Bless um, whatever form of juice we have or whatever it is that we have um, as to, to represent the um, shed blood of Jesus. Bless not only the cup, oh God, but also bless the bread, bless the crackers that we have um, offered and prepared um, to represent the Lord's broken body, oh God. I pray that you will bless it in the name of Jesus. This is our prayer. Amen and amen. Amen. So let us um, gather our elements at this time. Let us gather and prepare our elements, all family members. Um, get the bread. And hopefully you have distributed the juice amongst each other. Amen. And as they were eating, Jesus took the bread. He broke it. He blessed it. And he said, take, eat, for this is my body. Amen. Let's eat together. And in the same manner, he took the cup after he blessed it. He said, take drink, for this is my blood, which has been poured out for the remission of many sins. For verily I say unto you, I will not drink of this cup again with you until I do so with you in my father's kingdom. Let us um, drink together. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The blood still works. Amen. The blood will never lose its power. We praise God for this moment um, that we share together in the Lord's Supper. One thing I do know is that even though we are not um, able to assemble together, we are connected by the blood of Jesus. 
It is his blood that reminds us that even though um, the restrictions have allowed us to not come together physically, we are connected together by the blood of Jesus. Amen. So praise God um, for this Lord's Supper. As we customarily do, nothing changes. We're not going to do the uh, a benediction on this first Sunday. The scripture reminds us in Matthew 26 that um, as they went out after taking the Lord's Supper and, then, and having that Passover meal, the scripture reminds us that they went out and sung a hymn um, at the, on the Mount of Olives. Amen. So prayerfully, um, you and your family are seeing something together fellowship with one another, but I want to let you know I love you, I miss you, and I'll see you in the online sanctuary this Wednesday at 6 p.m. for Bible study. Amen. God bless you and God keep you until we meet again. Amen. You my hallelujah belongs to you. Oh yes it does. My hallelujah belongs to you yeah. right all right you deserve it yes god yes god yes god you deserve it yes god you deserve it oh you deserve it oh hallelujah yeah. it belongs to you it belongs to you